All right, that's done. All right, it's done. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our first episode of Life After Graduation. My name's Alex and Claire. So we are the hosts Hi, of the of the, um, the podcast. The podcast and yep. conversation. Sorry, my um, stuttering a bit because it's our first episode. <laughs> but, yeah, um, we try to make something friendly, right? <laughs> something friendly. Um, we're trying to engage with a lot of students, student leaders, um, past students of different universities, universities, including Swinburne University, which myself and Claire are graduates from. Mm. Um, and yeah, we, we, we find it is a really good idea to introduce and interview a lot of past students and leaders in the industry. So yeah, let's, uh, let's start it. Or blubber on more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And let's just jump into our very first episode with Aditya, one of the Swinburne alumni and our friends. He's yeah. got, he landed a great job at AMP as a data analyst, right? So your journey is great. So that's the reason why we want to bring you um, to this conversation. How was your life after graduation? Sure. So hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Aditya Shah. I recent, uh, as Claire mentioned, I'm a recent graduate from Swinburne University of Technology. Did my Master's of Business Information Systems, majoring in Business Analyst. So... To start with, uh, yeah, I graduated in July last year, 2019, and was looking for a job at that stage. And yeah, like like all the graduates, uh, I had pretty, not pretty clear picture in my mind, but yeah, pretty clear picture in my mind that what uh, jobs I want to apply into and what would be my future career look like. Yeah. Mm. So, what was your picture about your future? Your future when you just graduated last year, in July, right? Sure. So, after graduation in July, I had a couple of plans in my mind. Which was mm. first plan was to get into PhD as doctor philosophy in masters of uh, in business in systems, and plan B was experience from the market and then switch to the PhD program. So I went it, I, I, I went with option two, which was get a job first in the market and get a bit more of experience from the industry and then follow the future career as, as we move forward. So that was why, that was my couple of thoughts in the mind. And to start with, after graduation, I actively started to look for jobs and see where I can land possible opportunities. Mm -hmm. And that way, I landed a job in a software company, which was VEN, V-E-N-D. Mm -hmm. So it's a point of sale software selling company. And I got the job over there as transaction, uh, as a sales marketing associate. Mm -hmm. And yeah. But um, then did you just transition directly to, transi directly to your IMP job or any break between that? Yes, yes, definitely. So when I when I got the job from AMP, um, I I had a few offers from other companies, mm. which was again based in Sydney and which is a SME, small and medium price enterprise. Mm. So it's mm. not that big. Mm. So I had few decisions to make on like, should I go with the small uh, work culture where I'll be getting more exposure in terms of workload, people and culture and those kind of things, mm. and in compared to the bigger companies, uh, if it's a corporate, there are more work structures, protocols, hierarchies, and you know it's a different work environment compared to the smaller companies. Yeah. So really, yeah. making that decision whether should I should I go with the small company or SMEs or should I go with just um, corporate and see how that turns up. That was my decision to make, mm. and. Also, I looked for graduate programs and see how it can be adjusted to my career aspirations. Mm. So, yeah, that, that's one of the key things I considered. And apart from that, I would also like to add that um, if you have done master's or if you have at least done master's by coursework or research, mm. um, try, to, try to build that experience and repo in your resume as well while um, looking out for jobs. So 
if you have done masters or if you have done higher education, try to get into roles which have at least one or two years experience required. So you can mm. get more exposure in your uh, career. Mm, thank you. All right. So, so to first, you get several planes when you were an undergrad, right? You get plan A, plan B, plan C, and you aim directly to corporate. So you work, you ask, you work hard to get to that corporate environment. All right. And what was your career aspiration when you mentioned that? So my career aspiration was to land a job as a graduate business analyst at that mm -hmm. stage. All right. And that was my main aim. And I landed a job as transaction analyst, which is close yeah, to business so analyst. Close. Yes. Yeah, it's close to business analyst, but it's not 100% business analyst. But it's a good start from a graduate perspective that, okay, uh, even if I work in this role for at least one, one and a half year, two years, I mm. have more chances to achieve that goal in a longer duration. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And apart from that, yeah, it's just uh, figuring out which would be where you will be comfortable with and what sort of industry you would like to go in. So basically, um, previously I've worked in a real estate industry, which is like Unilodge, RA and all that. So inspections and those sort of industry. Then I've switched to banking industry. Then I switched mm. to retail industry. So making sure that which sort of industry you want to follow fall into and what would be your um, outcome from that. Mm -hmm. All right. So make sure that the industry you want to follow to, right? And then yes. aim for the position you want to. Yep. Thank you. Um, but does coming to Sydney something totally different out of lane? Hundred percent, it's completely different out of uh, Melbourne. So, so that that's one of the key things. And if you move to a different city and different state, it's mm. completely different experience. Like from you have to start from scratch. So you have to mm. start making new friends. You have to start, um, you know, figuring out which places to live in and those sort of information. Oh. And yeah, I I was I was prepared to move to any parts of Australia, whether if it's Tasmania or wherever it was. Yeah. But luckily, I moved into Sydney, which is which has like the highest opportunities amongst all the states. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah. So in, in four months, what do you do in that four months? That's a really good question. So I graduated in July. I graduated mm -hmm. in July 2019. And I landed a job in a software company named Van. So it's mm. a point of selling software selling company. So I landed a job in July and, and that was my full-time job. Uh, mm. It was, it wasn't a contract basis and it was a full-time job for more than 12 months. Mm. And after that, I quit, I quit that job in October. I quit mm. that job because I thought that this, uh, this won't be making any uh, significant contribution to my career. Mm. So I decided to quit that job and after that I'm looking for a new job. So from July to October I had a job. Mm. Then I quit my job in October. Then mm. I got another job in November which was in a bank, Judo mm. Bank, so it was a junior data analyst. So I really liked the second job and wanted that to continue but unfortunately they, they didn't have enough uh, work for me at that stage. So mm. I was out of work in December. Then from mm. December onwards, I started to look for jobs. And as it was a Christmas period, uh, there were a lot of jobs, but no interviews were happening. Mm. And in January, I finally got an interview in Sydney. So I came to, I flew from Melbourne to Sydney just for the interview. Mm. And after appearing for the interview, it was all good. So in a nutshell, basically what I would like to say is from July to February, I gave seven face-to-face -face interviews and 20 phone interviews, more than 20 phone seven. interviews. Seven, so it's, it's about yeah. 27, 27 interviews, all right? So yeah, you, in total, 27 in total. Yeah, so you, you, you got to a lot of, no, 27 is not too much, right? And you, you, you land a job after the 28th interview, is it? <laughs> Some people need to get uh, to 100 more <laughs> yes so it's basically after every interview you 
you make sure that why I was not able to clear that up and mm -hmm. you like re rewrite your resume, rewrite your thoughts and see how you can structure your answers while giving the interview. My, yes, so I used to like uh, rewrite my CV after every two or three weeks. So basically mm -hmm. when you're applying for a job, what happens is after you apply for the job, you get a call for a phone screening within two weeks of your applying mm. of the application. So if you don't get a call from the employer within two weeks, you need to change your resume accordingly. Mm. Like you need to make some changes and mm. then you start applying again and then you wait for two weeks mm. and it's an iterative process where, okay, you will come at a stage where, okay, now I'm getting a lot of calls from the employers. So now my resume is good. Now I need mm. to work on my interview question and answers, like how to prepare for interview. That's the stage two of um, getting a job. And once you're at stage two, stage three comes in where you are facing, you're, when you're having one-on-one -on -one interviews or face-to-face -face interviews. And at that time you don't, you didn't get selected. So you need to re rewrite your answers, rethink your answers. Mm. And stage four is basically getting a job. So that's like, that's the um, whole uh, story in a nutshell. But mm. it requires a lot of patience and it requires a lot of resilience and being a thick skin and, you know, starting to call, like cold emailing or sending a LinkedIn message or calling the person. So that's just uh, your approach you need to take every, every time you apply for a job. Have you called, have you called, are you directly contact with the interviewers to, to seek for the result of your, your interview results? Yeah, that's a good question. So yeah, a couple of them I've contacted via email mm. and phone. So I, I was interviewed at Bupa. Um, so at Bupa, I called them and asked for the feedback. And mm. that, that's a couple of examples. And also I called Baker's Delight. Mm. So Baker's Delight, I called as well and asked for a feedback. So it's, uh, I think it's no harm in calling and asking for a feedback or even like what's the status of your application because I think if you have a feedback, you know what, what's, yeah, gone, what's yeah. gone wrong, where you can work on. So that nice. way you can structure your answers and resume and see, okay, how, this is how I need to mitigate the mistakes I've done in the past and mm. this is how I'll be moving forward. So, so they did give you feedback. They did give you feedback, right? They do, That's yes. Some of the times they do, they do pick up your call and they do uh, answer mm. your questions, but some of the times they won't. They won't just uh, they won't just bother to uh, reply to you or emails or whatever it is. But yeah. like I said, you need to be patient and you need to be patient. Have resilience. See, have resilience and see what can be done. Oh, thank you. That's so insightful. And yeah, and and how did you? How was the process of interviewing to AMP? Was it something new and challenging to you? Uh, in terms of challenge, in terms of uh, interviewing at AMP, definitely the interview was in Sydney and I was based in Melbourne at that mm -hmm. time. And I got a call on in January saying that uh, there's an interview on 31st of January and are you able to come to the interview? And I said, okay, fine, I'll be coming to the interview. <laughs> But when they sent an, an email and it said, okay, you have to come to an interview for to Sydney, Mm -hmm. And I called the HR manager and said, okay, is there a typo mistake in the email? Because it says the interview is in Sydney. And the person said, okay, it's in the Sydney. Are you, are you willing to move? Or are you like, are you willing to move? Because you have mentioned that in your resume. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, definitely I'm willing to move. But uh, just coming for the interview to Sydney would be a bit of a second thought from my side. Mm -hmm. And they said, it's completely up to you. You can do a face to face. Uh, you can do a video call interview and that should be all right. And I said, yeah, okay, that's fine. But my second thought was, okay, I don't want to do a video interview. I, I want to do a face to face interview because that gives a more, that gives a more definitive approach while answering those questions and you know, mm -hmm. proving your, proving your EQ and IQ at that stage. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I booked my flights the other day. I came to Sydney for half an hour interview. And yeah, I remember well that before, exactly a day before coming to Sydney for the interview, uh, we had this session with Alex. Alex might be knowing. Uh, it was a design thinking session mm. uh, in Swinburne. 
So mm-hmm. yeah, I, I discussed uh, briefly with Alex and said, okay, I'm flying to Sydney tomorrow. I have an interview with this AMP, and he said, okay, yeah, good luck. And yeah, even Alex said, okay, you're going to Sydney just for the interview. I said, yeah, yeah, I'm going. I, I can't believe it. I'm still going for just for the interview. Same full-time working job. It's it's not that it's not that easy. And mm-hmm. like you, you need to be into the role, and you need to make sure that whatever you are doing is making a big impact in the company's decision making process so you need to be really focused on that part as well and you need to be physically and mentally prepared for a full time job mm. yeah and hopefully we can yeah. get another episode to talk about um corporate life with adita at yeah. imp yep. sure. thank you adita so i think that's all for today we know life after graduation of Adita and hopefully the resilient story of Adita can inspire other students.